السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يقول الله عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم We begin with the most important thing that we do and that is sending our thanks and our praise and our gratitude towards our Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala in all situations even if you perceive it as good or even if you perceive it as bad Alhamdulillahi da'iman wa abada Alhamdulillah, always and forever. And we ask him to send his peace and blessings upon his final messenger, Muhammad, and all those who follow in his footsteps. And we ask Allah from the bottom of our heart to make us amongst his followers in this world and to allow us to be resurrected with our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the next life and to allow us to be part of his close friends in the next life. Allah says in the Quran, O you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared. Be conscious of your Creator as He deserves. When you make your decisions, include the thought of your Creator as He deserves. And do not die except in a state of Islam. May Allah allow us to leave this world in a state of Islam. Allahumma ansur ikhwanana al-mazlumina fi Gaza, wa fi Palestine, wa fi Sudan, wa fi Lebanon, wa fi Sham, wa fi kulli makan in ya Rabbil Alameen. The list of countries gets longer and longer. The places that we make du'a for. And I know some people say, wait, you don't have to mention everything. Well, it takes one second of our time. And at the very least, I say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I didn't forget those people specifically. Everyone, people are suffering, but just because it grows doesn't mean we can say, well, all right, then just, I mean, the bigger it gets, the less I care. That's the, the foolish thinking. That's the opposite thinking. 
the bigger it gets, the more you should panic. The more it should be urgent for you and the more you should work to remove it. If you are waking up every single day with all that's happening, all the suffering that's happening to your brothers and sisters worldwide, if you wake up every single day without a care in the world for them, then I ask Allah to give your heart life because it's dead. Not only because you don't care about other people, but because you're living in a world that is increasing in dhulm and evil and hardship, and you're not even thinking that, wait, if it's spreading, it's going to get to me next. Eventually, it's going to get to my kids. I'm going to leave a world behind that they will be enslaved. They will be oppressed, God forbid. They will be attacked, this and that. So you should be thinking this way. At the very least, do it for yourself and for your kids. But that should be the least of your intentions. You should be doing it for those who are suffering now. We ask Allah Ta'ala to use us and not replace us. Allahumma sta'amilna wa la tastabdilna. Brothers and sisters, it is reported that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّ لِرَبِّكُمْ فِي أَيَّامِ دَهْرِكُمْ لَنَفَحَاتِ فَتَعَرَّضُوا لَهَا Your Lord has designated some periods of time as gifts. So accept these gifts from Him. تَعَرَّضُوا لَهَا When Allah, what does, what does it mean that Allah designated some periods of time as gifts? It means that you don't have any control over it. It wasn't through your own amal, through your own actions that you received an opportunity. It was, you don't control time, I don't control time, nobody does. It just, Allah gave it to you. You happen to be alive right now during the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. A gift from Allah. The Prophet Wasallam advised that there is no deed that is more beloved to Allah than the ones that are done during these 10 days, the good deeds. Meaning the reward is multiplied more than you can possibly think. And I hate to use like dunya terms because it can cheapen the akhirah. But I hope that this, you forgive me for this example. If you're supposed to make $1,000 at work, but somebody tells you, if you work for these next 10 days, I will give you $700,000 instead of 1000 I mean, come on. There's not a single human being who would not work every single waking moment of those 10 days. But that's how we think about dunya. If we thought about akhirah the same way, we would really understand life. We would be like the Sahaba, like those stories you read about the Muslims of the past. And we would achieve eternal bliss in the next life. But we're not there. May Allah forgive us. So at least do what you can. The Prophet ﷺ, when he says, فَتَعَرَّضُوا لَهَا when Allah gives these gifts, ta'arrad lahum, and the way I translated it was accept these gifts. That's not really the perfect translation. It does the job. Ta'arradu laha, meaning just be present when these gifts are being given out. So how many times does Allah give us these gifts? Ramadan, the 10 days of the Hijjah, the last third of the night, every night. Every Jum'ah, there is the Prophet ﷺ said, authentic hadith. There is one hour every Jum'ah where if any believer makes a dua, it will be accepted. Any dua you make. And it happens every single Jum'ah. How many of us take advantage of that and we try to find it? And we just at least present ourselves. Ta'arradu laha. Be present when these gifts are being given out. Come to the places where gifts are being given out for free, like the masjid. So increase in coming to the masjid, especially during these blessed days. Make yourself available when these opportunities are being handed out. That's all you have to do. Perhaps, فَلَعَلَّهَا أَن تُصِيبَكُمْ نَفْحَةٌ مِنْهَا فَلَا تَشْكُونَ بَعْدَهَا أَبَدًا Perhaps a gift may come in your lap and you will never have any negativity or you will never have a hard life again or you will never uh, be fooled by evil again. Maybe that seals your fate. Maybe a dua that you make sincerely during these 10 days gets accepted and you're good. You say, oh Allah, grant me the highest level of Jannah without any hisab. Say Ameen. Ameen. Perhaps Allah accepts this dua and that's it. You, you were present when Allah was giving gifts and you accepted it. And it covers you. Perhaps you make dua for your children and their iman and their protection in this difficult world. And Allah accepts it. Perhaps you give sadaqah, you give some charity during these blessed 10 days. And as the Prophet ﷺ said, Dawu mardakum bis sadaqah. Mardakum bis sadaqah. Seek a cure for your ill by giving charity. That's a form of seeking a cure for them. So perhaps that gets accepted during these days. Perhaps you give that with that intention for yourself and then you never face any difficult illness until the day you die. Right? Allow me to keep my health 
and my strength and my, my sight and my, my hearing until I leave this world. That was a dua that the Prophet ﷺ made. So we should make it as well. So the Prophet ﷺ is advising us, whenever you hear that Allah is giving gifts away, go. Be present. Accept it. Don't say, oh, and I feel emotionally ready. If somebody was offering $700,000, you're not going to say, well, I'll do when I can, when I think about it. I'll try. And then you don't do anything. Treat it more importantly because it is more important. And the one thing that you can never do is complain to Allah on the day of judgment that you did not have enough opportunities. Don't say, oh Allah, my life was hard and I, didn't, I couldn't and other people had it easier. Those excuses will not work on the day of judgment. حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتِ قَالَ رَبِّ ارْجِعُونَ لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِيمَا تَرَكْتُ كَلَّا إِنَّهَا كَلِمَةٌ هُوَ قَائِلُهَا وَمِنْ وَرَائِهِمْ بَرْزَخٌ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ Allah says in the Qur'an, until when death comes to one of them, what do they say? He says, Lord, send me back so that I may do righteousness in what I have neglected. Now I want to do good deeds when death has come to me. And that is the story, that is the motto of every lazy, neglectful person. They wait until the opportunity has passed and then they say, okay, now, now, please, give me a chance. I'll show you. Kalla. Allah says, no, 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 no. This person is a liar. This is just a word that you say. Now that the opportunity has passed, you say, you'll see what I would do if I would go back. Allah says, nobody's going back. There will be a barrier between them and life until the day they are resurrected. Nobody goes back to dunya once you have squandered the opportunity. May Allah protect us from that. It is a warning for mankind. For whoever amongst you wishes to go forward, or wishes to lag behind. May Allah Ta'ala make us of those who go forward. أقول ما تسمعون واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه. Seek Allah's forgiveness. الحمد لله وحده. والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم استعملنا ولا تستبدلنا Oh Allah, use us for good and do not replace us So brothers and sisters, a quick list of action items to benefit from these next 10 days The first one is of course fasting Fast, even though it is summertime and Maghrib is later, if you are able then fast If you have some fasts to make up from Ramadan because you missed some, you should prioritize those Yes, you can do them during the 10 days of the Hijjah. Of course, we're talking about only the first 8 days. The ninth day is Arafah. You should make a specific intention for Arafah. Do not make up a, a, a day of if you have some missing. And then, of course, the 10th day is Eid. And Eid, you do not fast on Eid. So for the next few days, you are able to make up any days you have missed. If you did not miss any, then fast anyway. and Make it a Sunnah fast, especially next Saturday. Next Saturday, not tomorrow, the one after, it's going to be Arafah. And the Prophet ﷺ said, يُكَفِّرُ السَّنَةَ الْمَاضِيَةَ وَالْبَاقِيَةَ It will forgive the sins of one year going back and one year going forward, inshaAllah ta'ala. Another thing you can do is to read Qur'an daily. How many of us, you got to be honest with yourself, how many of us have not picked up the Mus'haf since Ramadan the 30th? It's a reality. It's something that we feel guilty about, we feel shameful about. Shame and guilt is only good if you channel it towards doing good. Otherwise, what's the point? So if you feel that way, good, that's fine. You should feel ashamed of it. But say, you know what? I'm going to channel this energy into making me read Quran. For these next 10 days, every single day, half an hour of Quran or whatever you're capable of. Next is to make dhikr. Mention Allah's name in any way you can. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah, istaghfirullah, anything at all. Mention Allah's name instead of anything else that you would say. Fill your empty hours and empty minutes with the mention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Especially when you commute. You commute to work, you commute to school, you're in the car, you're in a bus, you're in the subway for hours per week. Instead of filling your ears and your heart with poison, the music of the Satanists, and they put it in your heart and soul, fill it with ilm. Listen to a lecture. Make use of these times. There's no time on earth that the deeds are worth more than these days. So make the best out of it. And if you choose to neglect this opportunity, then the people around you are going to take it. 
And the people you prayed with and you, the people you stand, stood next to and your neighbors, they're going to be so much higher than you in Jannah that you will not be neighbors anymore. That's if you make it and if we make it. May Allah Ta'ala allow us to make it to Jannah. Give charity every single day. Every single day, give charity during these 10 days. Opportunities come and go. One such opportunity is our masjid. As you know, these big construction projects come with huge bills. And alhamdulillah, we have started the demolition of the next door building. The old masjid, it's going to be built anew, bigger and better for our community by Allah's permission. That, if you are unfamiliar, this building that we are praying in now, this is the activities building. This is the projects and the programs. The next door is actually going to be the musalla, the masjid. And that's where 99% of the prayers will be happening throughout the, the future of the masjid, inshallah. So this is your opportunity to invest in the ground level so every single prayer that goes in there gets into your hasanat. Once it's built, the opportunity went away. Right? You still can donate, but it won't be as big of an opportunity as now. So use these 10 days to donate generously to your community and pay the bills, the big bills of this uh, construction project. But also, of course, you can never neglect your brothers and sisters overseas. For those who are doing qurbani, those who are doing udhiyah, slaughtering uh, in the hajj days, then you should find a country that is deserving or an area that they could definitely benefit uh, from that meat and uh, feed those who uh, can, can uh, benefit from it more so than us here in America. Next thing that you must do, you must include in your list, is Sulat al-Rahim, connecting with your relatives. Every single person here must make a list of all their relatives, anybody you can think of, and reach out to every single one of them during these 10 days. That is something I plan to do, inshallah. It's tough, it shouldn't be tough, because we've never lived in a world where it's free and instant to contact anybody on the planet, and yet we have never been more disconnected. It's a paradox. It's very satanic. We are able to reach them in immediate, immediately for free and talk for as long as we want. But we don't do it. Shaitan has convinced us not to. The Prophet ﷺ advised us that Sulat al-Rahim, connecting with relatives, it increases your rizq and it increases your lifespan. Your rizq meaning your wealth and your lifespan is very self-explanatory, your health and well-being. So that's, that's the dunya benefits you get from that, but the akhirah benefits are more significant. And then finally, Come to the masjid daily. Make sure you're catching prayers here. Teach your children. Bring them with you. Uh, come to the events and the programs that we're going to have, inshallah ta'ala. And as always, work on improving your character. Ask yourself, how can these 10 days change me? I should always be trying to change and to grow. How can these 10 days change me, inshallah? One last message for the families, for the parents. Make sure that your children feel the festive season. Whenever Christmas comes around or Hanukkah comes around, they say Christmas season, holiday season, Hanukkah, 10 days of Hanukkah, or this or that. Where do we have that in Islam? This is it. We have Ramadan, of course, but we have the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Do you know the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ? They used to go to the marketplaces in Medina and start to make takbir the same way that we do during Eid. And then people would join them slowly and then it would be like we feel, everyone would make takbir like we feel on Eid morning. They would just do that during these days. And people would join. Imagine the whole marketplace is shaking, the walls are shaking, the floor is shaking from takbir of everybody present. Allahu Akbar. That's an experience we'd love to see one day. But start it in your house. Start it in your masjid. Start it with your friends and family. Takbir and dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make sure the children feel the festivities. They feel the season. Put up some lights in the house. Go watch something educational about hajj or teach them about hajj. Learn about it first yourself. Tell them about what these kind of things because they're not going to get it outside. TV is not going to teach them. The society is not going to teach them. They're going to put up lights for other holidays, not yours. You have 330 million people in this country and Muslims make up 1 or 2%. That means it's your responsibility to make sure that the festivities are placed and planted in your kids' hearts, inshallah. So bring them to the masjid, give them gifts. Have an iftar. Try to have an iftar during this week. Invite friends and family. Let your kids see that. Let your kids see that we're celebrating and we're eating together and having a good time together, inshallah. You can take them on a vacation for Eid and you can take your kids out and do, and do anything else that is festive, inshallah. I want to leave you with the following words of Allah just to reflect on. Ya ayyuhan nas, qad ja'akum burhanu min rabbikum wa anzalna ilaykum nuran mubina fa'amma alladhina amanu billahi wa'atasamu bihi fasayudikhiluhum fi rahmatin minhu wa fadl. 
O people, a proof has come to you from your Lord, and we have sent down to you a clear light. As for those who believe in Allah and hold fast to him, he will admit them into mercy and grace from him, and he will guide them towards himself in a straight path. We ask Allah Ta'ala to guide us towards him in a straight path. We ask Allah to use us and not replace us. We ask Allah to protect our iman and the iman of our children. We ask Allah to aid our brothers and sisters suffering in Gaza and in Palestine and in Lebanon, Yemen, Kashmir, Sudan, and everywhere in the world, in Burma, in East Turkestan, everywhere that anyone is suffering unjustly, we ask Allah to lift that oppression and to punish the oppressors and to make us a means of aid for them in this world and to join us and combine, combine us, join us with them in the next life. Allahumma ghfir lil muslimina wal muslimat wal mu'minina wal mu'minat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat Allahumma aati nufusana taqwaha wa zakkiha anta khayru man zakkaha anta waliyuha wa mawlaha Allahumma ansur ibadaka al mazlumina fi kulli makan Allahumma ansur ikhwanana al mazlumina fi filastin wa fi sham wa fi yaman wa fi wa fi sudan wa fi kulli makan ya rabb al alamin Allahumma ahlik al zalimina bil zalimin وأخرج المسلمين من بينهم سالمين غانمين اللهم احفظنا واحفظ أولادنا وصل اللهم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استقيموا وتراسوا واعتدلوا سدوا الخلف foot to foot shoulder to shoulder fill in all the gaps الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى ولا الآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولا سوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر
Allahu Akbar. Sami'a Allahu liman hamida. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله